The central dogma is one of the most important concepts in modern biology. This concept is at the heart of the inner works of every cell in our bodies and in every cell of other organisms as well. These molecular events can be very complex and there's enormous detail surrounding them. So we will take a bird's eye view of the concept in this video. At its most basic level, the central dogma and all of molecular biology relates to how information is transferred and processed inside of a cell. How do you fit information into a microscopic cell, you might ask? And what kind of information can you fit in there? The information in a cell is found within the sequence of monomers or building blocks which make up a macromolecule. This means that the many nucleotide bases which make up a larger DNA molecule are found in a specific sequence or order and that this sequence has a meaning or purpose in the cell. The same is true for a closely related nucleic acid known as RNA and for another type of macromolecule built from different building blocks, protein. We are familiar with how sequences encode information in everyday life from the barcodes on products in the supermarket to Morse code to even how the combination of different letters produces meaningful words. To understand the flow of information in the cell and the purpose of this information, it's helpful to think of the cell as a sort of restaurant. The nucleus, where we find DNA, is like the head office. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, which contains molecular machines known as ribosomes, is like the kitchen, and the rest of the cell is somewhat like the dining room, where the patrons are served the finished products. The head office contains the master copy or master cookbook containing all the recipes. This is vital for the restaurant, for without it, no dishes could be produced. The recipe book by itself is not enough, however. After all, people eating at this restaurant are not going to be eating the pages out of the book. We need a chef to translate the information in the recipes into an actual dish by mixing together different ingredients. The finished products are then sent to other parts of the cell or the restaurant where they fulfill their purpose. In a restaurant, for example, different tables could order or need different dishes, which will rely on chefs translating different recipes as needed. Let's take a closer look at these important steps and see how they are followed by the cell. Again, in a restaurant, all of the chefs cannot share one single cookbook. Not only would that be inefficient, but if the only copy of that cookbook was damaged, the restaurant would be unable to function. Therefore, working copies of the needed recipes are made and distributed to the chefs. Not every recipe would need to be copied, just the ones for which a dish has been ordered. In the cell, the DNA in your nucleus is a molecule which acts as a sort of master copy or master cookbook containing all of the recipes. Through a process known as transcription, the sequence of a portion of that DNA is copied into a molecule of RNA. The RNA molecule thus will have a similar or equivalent sequence to the portion of DNA it was copied from. In the cell, each recipe is known as a gene. And instead of providing instructions for making dinner, each gene, more or less, contains instructions for making a specific protein, which is another type of macromolecule. How is this done? How do we go from DNA to RNA to finally to protein? Well, working copies of RNA are delivered from the nucleus, or the head office, to the ribosomes in the endoplasmic reticulum or the cytoplasm. 
The ribosome, along with accessory factors such as tRNAs, act as molecular chefs. Now, they don't build the proteins directly from the molecules in the RNA. Just the same way that a chef doesn't cook you dinner out of the paper that the recipe is printed on. Instead, the sequence in the RNA gives instructions to the ribosome on how to take the ingredients, which in this case are amino acids, and assemble them into a larger protein. This whole process, which is vital to all life, is known as translation. For a cell to remain alive and healthy, it must operate like a successful restaurant. Not all recipes need to be made at the same time, and only certain proteins are produced when needed. This selective production in the amount and the timing of each protein is known as gene expression. Each protein has different characteristics because of its individual sequence of amino acids. And these different characteristics from these proteins can influence cell behavior. Now, in the same way that a restaurant needs to have chefs which are quick and produce consistent dishes and produce them correctly, so, much, <clears throat> so too must a cell produce proteins in a quick and accurate way. If the proteins are not made correctly or not made fast enough, the cell will not be able to function properly. Now, the severity of this problem, of course, will depend upon the specific role each protein is playing.